Alden. Yes. Your name? You're Han Solo. That's true. How the heck did that happen? us you're in this life for good that might be the only person who knows what you really are what's that Well, I started auditioning. I think I was the first person to audition for the role, actually. And then I auditioned for about six months, and I did a screen test on the Millennium Falcon with Chewie, and then I got the part. You think everything sounds like a bad idea. So was there a chemistry test with Chewie? Yeah, there was. So what's your name anyway? You're gonna need a nickname, because I ain't saying that every time. And if you didn't yeah. connect. Well, actually, in the first audition they had a scene you know and they have to be really secretive about star wars so they can't say oh this is a scene with you and chewbacca and you have like a fake name like my fake name was mike and then they had me do a scene where i'm talking to a dog and they had like a dog puppet in the audition and then like a little dog sound effect when do you know how to fly 190 years old you look great. So you'd talk and do the scene and then they'd go, and then they'd go, like hit a button and go like, Rawr. and then there's a puppet. But the puppet was good. But the you must have been like, good. I wonder who this doll is. Yeah, exactly, is supposed to be, right? Might be represented. Right. That's yes. How did you celebrate when you knew the role was yours? I got the part during the day and everyone I knew was busy. So I was by myself. So I, went, I drove to the beach and I walked around and I went on a ride by myself. <laughs> it's true. So it's like a roller coaster going. I went on a roller coaster by myself. It's true. I haven't said that to anybody yet. <laughs> and then I went out to dinner and, you know. Sure. So, yeah. But I also can't tell anybody. No. So I had to be celebrating just on the inside. So you had to tell them, guys, I'm in a really good mood. And they were like, why? Right. Yeah, exactly. I can't tell you. For some reason, going on a roller coaster by yourself seems very hard. Right. I'm sort of immediately regretting that I told you that, but that's all right. <laughs> <laughs> no shame. But it's true. There was no one. There was no one around. So yeah. I was like, "What do I do?" And yeah. I drove to the beach and I went on a walk. And then I found myself at the <laughs> pier. And I was like, "Well, f it." I mean, the real exciting one was telling my nieces and nephews mm -hmm. who were playing with Star Wars toys and who are familiar with all the movies and that's like their thing. And them finding that out is, was, was very exciting. What were your biggest fears taking on the character? Because I don't want to remind you now. <laughs> it's okay. He's kind of a big deal. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. What? You're always very aware of what other people will think and, and, you know, whether that's being on set or whether that's when the movie comes out. And part of your job is really to tune that out as best as possible and just kind of be as true to the person whose life you're responsible for as, as you can and focus on your own character. So at no point did anybody in the audition process get you to point aggressively at someone? Look, I ain't in this for your revolution, man. I'm not in it for you, princess. No, no, no one asked me to do that on purpose, no. But you found That yourself... made its way in, probably, but yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> in my mind, it's like, if you can't do the... Right. Ah, uh, come on. Yeah, 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 that thing, yeah. I mean... Yeah. There's been, you've admitted here, some pressure on you here and then what happens with the directors happens. Uh -huh. And then on the first day that Ron Howard is shooting, I gather... George Lucas comes. I know he was probably <laughs> trying to help, right? <laughs> right. But from your perspective, yeah. you must have been like, really? Yeah. <laughs> and it also felt good to have his kind of validation. And then honestly, one of the things that I've really felt working, the more I got into the Star Wars universe and the more I really just absorbed all that is just how grateful all of us need to be to him. Because it came out of his mind. I mean, he sat there and I think worked tremendously hard to create this universe that we've been telling stories within for 40 years. And the imagination that he has, we're all still playing in that sandbox. So it's pretty, pretty remarkable. Was that the first time you met him? Yes. Wow. Yes. I'm presuming you've met Harrison. Yes, I had lunch with Harrison. Chewie. We're home. 
What was that lunch like? It was great. He's really fun and really was very supportive, very encouraging of the movie. I, of course, want nothing to do with it <laughs> in the nicest possible way. And I'm, but I know that it will be well done and well guided. We were starting to prep and I just felt like I wanted to get his blessing on the movie. So I kind of was like, let's reach out to him because it felt wrong to do it without having done that and had a great lunch with him. I'm glad that uh, uh, somebody else is going to have the burden of being young and <laughs> and take care of that part. Yeah, he's just, it's very cool to sit there and, you know, talk to him because he'll be talking. He'll say, yeah, you know, on Indy 3, I did this. And you're just like, whoa, right? Oh my God. Get out of my chair. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, this yeah, is normal. Yeah. This yeah. is my life. Yeah. And I thought he was so smart <laughs> about what he did and how he did it. I just couldn't be happier. Wow. Did he give you any specific bits of advice? Well, he said, if anyone asked, tell him I told you everything you need to know and that you're not allowed to tell anybody. <laughs> That's the perfect answer. Yeah, it is. Stop, look, I cannot tell you. Right. He uh, gave me that, and now I just get to it's use that whenever. Yeah. Superb. Yeah. Because... You know, Han is Han, and you want to. Uh -huh. We've all we've all him. pretended. We've all played it. Well, that was my feeling getting on the Falcon. I was, you know, expecting to be a lot more nervous, and then when I got there and I walked onto the ship, I was like, "Well, I've pretended that I was on this as a kid, so who cares?" This is not my first time doing this. There yeah. happens to be really expensive props around exactly. me. Exactly. Like multi-million dollar cameras. Right, right. We've been here before. And it's so familiar, you know, the particular aesthetic of Star Wars, which is kind of space age and Moroccan and kind mm. of this interesting mix of stuff. You just know it so well as if it's a, an actual culture. Are there any pieces of advice, not specifically about Han, that you've been given over the years that stick in your mind? The first director on a on a on the, a show called Supernatural that I was on the second episode of when I was 15. Could it be he's just having fun and forgot to check in? He wouldn't do that. The director of that, David Nutter, told me, uh, trust your instincts, which is really simple advice, but is, is phenomenally significant. And how have you been handling the other side of this whole experience, which is the fame? It hasn't impeded into my life in a huge way as of yet. It's been actually okay. I can still go out and do whatever I want. It may slightly change. It might change. Once this movie comes out, we'll see. I don't know when that happens. When like the they flick the switch <laughs> and that's you can't go to a restaurant. But uh, yeah, we'll see. I don't know. When you do get recognized right now, what are mm -hmm. people saying to you typically? I get recognized a lot from a movie I did called Beautiful Creatures, which was a bomb, but mm -hmm. there's a lot of people who really love it. I hope this doesn't sound weird, but I think I've been dreaming about you every night for months. And so I get that a lot. And then also people say I'm really excited for Solo. Yeah, that's what I get a lot. And you go, don't even ask me anything. <laughs> right. Just, <laughs> just get away from me. <laughs> I just throw a drink in their face. I see you're yeah. enjoying my presence. Go away. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Leave me now. <laughs> Now, I know uh, the Lucasfilm team are quite strict about what you can take home, but were there any mementos you were allowed to... Yeah, I have a jacket. Yeah, I don't know if I'm allowed to say that, but I do. So, let's yeah. imagine, hypothetically, yeah. you're given the jacket. Yes. <laughs> when can you wear it? <laughs> That's a very good question. I wear it out all the time. I wear it constantly. <laughs> Yeah, I go out to dinner in LA. Because whilst you're not I being just... stopped in the street. Right. I need to get more of that. Exactly. <laughs> That's what I'm trying to do. I want to throw glasses of drink at people. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So I need to wear the jacket. I set it up and hope people come by. And then when they do, I just go, yes, I have it. Yes. I don't know when or if I will ever wear it, but it's fun to have. The Millennium Falcon. Every ship isn't for everyone. She needs a particular type of pilot. I struggle to think of a character that's cooler than Han. Yes. What is the coolest thing that has happened to you over this experience where you've thought to yourself, is this really happening? I think this is a not that unexpected answer, but I think flying the Millennium Falcon was a pretty big part of that. Get ready. Thought we were in trouble there for a second, but it's fine. We're fine. Oh. That was a pretty cool feeling. I know this is possibly relevant, but yes. is, is it your hands doing the insert shots? Yes. Because they're my favorite part of any yes. Millennium Falcon moment is the- Yes. End. There's a lot of good stuff like that, but yes, it is. <laughs> I told you I'm a nerd. Yes. <laughs> it's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you. You too. Thank so you much. very much. Thanks for watching. For more, check out my BBC iPlayer show, Movies with Ali Plum, 
And don't forget to listen to me on Greg James's show on BBC Radio 1 every Thursday at about quarter past six, where you can hear the very latest movie reviews from yours truly. <laughs>